So the delivery guy just came. These two are really freaked out. But it's my Civiline Masarico. Kit thing is so big. I can't turn around because it's got my address on it, but I'm excited. I'm gonna open it up. So I finally got my package from Masarico. It's fucking huge. But back in November, December, um, Masrico did a collaboration with Sibylline, Sibylline, um, for like a gouache kit thing. Um, so I think it's a, like a sketchbook, some gouache uh, tubes, and like a workbook, and I can't remember, it's, it's big, like, it's a lot of stuff. Uh, and my in-laws were extremely generous and got a pre-order of um, the March shipment for me for Christmas. So it finally arrived. Um, I apologize if you hear chickens in the background and I apologize for the audio quality because unlike normal where I use my headset, I'm using my phone's mic. Um, but I will switch to my headset basically once I start using stuff. But I'm gonna open this and see what's inside. I'm so excited. Bubble wrap, that's always useful to save. I'm not perfect at it, but if you can save stuff to reuse, that's always a good idea. So that's why I'm mentioning the bubble wrap. All right, and let's just turn this around. Ooh, so pretty. I don't even want to open it. Let's check on the back, had some information. Oh, information about Sibylline. French illustrator born in the French Alps, grew up in an artistic household where books, films, drawing, and music always had an important place. Has been surrounded by trees, animals, mountains, and all types of flowers her whole life. As a kid, drawing was her main interest, as there wasn't much to do besides running around in the fields. Today, her work is inspired by the environment she grew up in. Like, I love... I might... It's very corny of me, but I might, like, cut these out and stick them to something. I don't know. Alright, is this... I think I'm supposed to just rip this sleeve, but I wonder if I can... Oh, oh, I can! I can! No, just slip out, please. I'm a bit of a pack rat, so that's part of why I was like, maybe I can cut these out and use them. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so... Set this aside. And... I've been wanting a Moss Rico sketchbook for a while. So... This was part of the reason I was really excited for it. So I was like, ooh, I can get a sketchbook. And gouache, which I've always been like curious about, but never been good at. So, ooh, pretty. Oh, and a little thank you note from Sibylline. Thank you for purchasing the kit. I always get questions about the tools I use and how I use them. Same. <laughs> Thanks to Masri, I finally have the opportunity to give you some answers. I hope you enjoyed this kit and workbook we cooked up for you. Thank you for your support, enthusiasm, and we'll create wonderful paintings. Well, that's ambitious. We'll see. Also, I have this further out than I normally do, so you can see like my big messy desk, my drafting table. I do like that this came in a fabric thing. Also, I apologize for the clinking sound behind me. It's our house hen Lottie, who um, during a we had two. Um, one of them didn't make it due to, I'm assuming, internal injuries from the bobcat attack. But Lottie's still in there. She's still got a bunged up leg. So she makes a lot of noise when she tries to like move herself around. So that's what the shuffling and clinking behind me is. Um, also, she's terrified of me because <laughs> our layers we don't handle a whole lot. I'd like them to have that fight or flight response still. So I don't tend to bother her too much because she gets a little stressed out and I just don't want to handle her unless I have to. So I like the little fabric bag. That's useful. Okay. Ooh, this paper is so cute. Alright. Trying not to destroy everything. So you can hear the wind outside. It's very windy today. Alright, hold on. I'm just gonna set them down off. Size. I don't drop everything on the floor. Okay. I wonder if I have a. Probably somewhere is a like menu of it, but let's see. So first bag, we've got a pair of brushes. Oh, I like these. I have used them before. I have a couple Princetons that I have. Is it Princeton? It's a Princeton. Yeah. Uh, these ones were Neptunes, not the Velvet Touches. This is the, my old favorite brush, but it's kind of frayed now. So I've been using my Mossrico one 
or not Mouse Rico, jeez, that's what this is. My Bean Paints paintbrush has been my new favorite because the, uh, oh, jeez. Because it's real nice, and you can see, like, that those bristles are good. It's still a little wet. I was just painting, but, yeah. In any case, these ones are Princeton's uh, Velvet Touch, which I think I have somewhere, a Velvet Touch that I just don't use very much. This one's a Filbert. Yep, a Filbert 8, and ooh, a liner in 10. That is, that is a fine liner. Let's see. Oh my god, I'm going to fall down trying to look at my camera to make sure it works. Yeah, very fine. This will be new for me. <laughs> These paintbrushes, we've got a mechanical pencil, uh, which works for me because I always use mechanical pencils for drawing. I basically buy the cheapest pack I can find, <laughs> and I go with that. Is that with some replacement lead. Gee, it's windy out there. Um, some washi tape in a nice mint green or seafoam green, I don't know. Uh, a new eraser, which are always good to have. Oh, and another Princeton brush, a zero round. This one's a little closer to what I would use for fine details normally. Um, I don't know if the camera, hold on, boop. There, sorry, I shook it. Um, I usually use just like, I like that short tip. I have a lot more control because I'm pretty ham-fisted. <laughs> All right, so some new brushes, which actually I'm very excited about because I've been wanting to pick up new brushes, like nice brushes. But because of the happenings, I haven't gone out much. So this is my gouache. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of tubes. That's a lot of tubes of gouache. Oh, look at those colors. There, talk after I'm done making a lot of noise. So a pile of gouaches, all the same company. They're all Holbein or Holbein, Holbein, Holbein. So in a multitude of colors, it's nice pastel pink. I love that already. And a beautiful like violet, ultramarine deep. It's like a purpley blue. A whole pack of gouache. I figured it was gonna be like the primaries. And they're gonna be like mix it. But no, that's that's a whole pile of gouache. I love it. Okay, and then oh, a palette, a porcelain palette. I didn't know it was gonna come with a palette. <gasps> ooh, ooh, it's so heavy. Oh, it's got the little like embossed Moss Rico stamp. I don't know if you can see that. Let me bring it up real close. Yeah, cute. Um, I usually use this cheap. $15 plastic palette I bought forever ago, so it'll be nice to have something a little less um, flimsy. I'm really excited for that. I like, I've been wanting a porcelain palette for a while. And because I am an adult now, I'm like, that's a nice box. That's a really, I'm gonna save this box. It's a really nice box. Be good for Christmas. <laughs> um, let's see, more bubble wrap. Ah, there we go. All right, so we got a couple things in here. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> all right, I'll save you for last. And then you, let's go for you. So there's a practice workbook. I'll open that in a sec. Everything is so cutely packaged. They know their audience. Bunch of idiots like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the cute stuff's great. All right, so there's like a little postcard print. Actually, I love that. Oh, the little ducks. Very cute. Um, oh God, where? Over there. Okay. Oh, and a little envelope. Probably so that you can send these off if you want. <laughs> Joke's on them. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it. Another little postcard print. Oh, I saw this one on her Instagram. I remember it being like, that's adorable. Another envelope to send it with. I ain't gonna. I mean, I might if somebody really loves one, but I did see this one on her Insta as well. Gorgeous. And the last one, a little tiger. So cute. And a couple sheets of stickers. Always love stickers. Sibylline and um, Kiki Tron are two of the only people, artists I know, that like love drawing hands. Weird. <laughs> you should check out Kiki Tron on, uh, she's on Insta and on Twitter. Um, she does like watercolor 
uh, primarily. And yeah, she'll do whole spreads where she just paints hands. It's, it's bonkers to me. I can't even, I can't comprehend. She once painted Marsha for me, my dog, because um, she wanted to do like an example for um, a painting course on like whites. Anyways, stickers. Uh, and some more prints. These are nice sized prints. I like this cardstock. Very like, very strong. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Okay. And then we've got what I'm assuming is the Last Recon Multimedia Sketchbook. I'm going to take the box and take that off my table. Again, a very nice box. Going to reuse it. <laughs> yeah, they know what they're doing. This is unbelievably satisfying to open. Oh, oh, it's got my name on it. I didn't know it would have my name on it. That's so cute. All right. I got way too excited for my name being embossed on an expensive sketchbook. <laughs> uh, so I know they had this a little while ago when Master was asking people to give um, like sayings or words of encouragement to put inside of their sketchbook achievements. So celebrate the little achievements in life from Sarah Amelina in Malaysia. Thanks, Sarah. Don't look at my discount code. <laughs> and then, like, beautiful. And it's embossed. And it's shiny embossment. Oh. <gasps> so pretty. Mustober. Oh, I know. They do this every every year. They have a set of um, prompts for October. Which, I don't know, maybe I'll do one of their prompts this year just to see if maybe I can get featured. <laughs> Probably. Ooh. Multiple pockets. Pockets. Excellent. I'm just gonna boop, tuck that in there for now. Ooh. Okay, I do like this paper. Is this hot press or cold press? I'm not smart enough to be able to tell yet. It's a little more textured than the paper I usually buy. Um, but I still like it a lot. Yeah, I still like it even though I usually buy less textured paper. But it's beautiful. I also like... I know everyone hates them, but I actually really like ring bound stuff because I find like this. I like this. I like being able to just flip quickly. Another big pocket. Ah! Gorgeous! So there's the sketchbook. And then let's open up the workbook. Damn it, open. Open! Open! Stage directions off screen. 30-something-year-old woman struggles with simple plastic wrapping. There we go. Hey, I did it. Great fully work, Megan. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Oh, there we go. She's unwrapped. Okay. So much plastic. I don't know why that had to be wrapped in plastic inside of a container wrapped in... Whatever. Whatever. I'm not their packaging company. All right. So, Mastery workbook with watercolor paper. So this is their watercolor sketchbook paper in here as well. So a guidebook from Sibylline. Oh, neat. So like doing shapes, uh, color mixing, building layers. I'm sure what she wants to do is do studies with her, and I probably will because I don't work with wash, so I don't know what I'm doing. That's right, I censored myself. Um, these are gorgeous. What a clever workbook. Oh my gosh. I can make these ideas. To hands. I don't understand. Um, I'll probably draw a bunch of bean animals. <laughs> uh, and then maybe I should. I should do a chicken swatch of these gouaches. Um, I'm going to need a bigger piece of paper. And they're going to be swatched so different than I'm used to. Because I don't know how gouache behaves. Gouache is so weird to me. I like this like landscape breakdown, although again, it's magic. Gouache is magic to me. I'm just gonna say that right now. Gouache is literal magic. Okay, so yeah, that, it's a very nice, it like breaks down how she worked on a painting process. That's handy. That'll be handy even without, um, like even if I don't use this book's study specifically. Here we go. Oh, so they got like a swatch page built in. Wow! That's, wow! That's a neat workbook. Okay, I thought the workbook was just like, hey, here's a guideline. No, no, it's like, color within the lines. Learn how to paint with the things. Oh my gosh! That's pretty cute. 
I hope there's some pages at the end that are just blank for me to work on. But... Oh no, there's just the full. Okay, so it's all the illustrations from the workbook. And it's just like, here, do it. <laughs> Which again, it's fine. No, I have no, no legs and feet. Although I don't have to draw them, I just have to paint them. So like, is it really that big a deal? I could also do just some of the studies and then take the rest of these and just do whatever I want on top of these. Wash is opaque enough that I could just use them as a paint surface. I don't know. Well, that's the book. I'm pretty sure I just looked at that entire workbook slightly off camera, so sorry about that. Um, but yeah, that's the Sibylline Mossery Co. like workbook collab pack thing. It's pretty neat. I like it. I'm gonna have fun with this. Uh, I'm probably gonna do some practice here soon. I'm gonna record that and see how I feel about it. <laughs> Alright. Time to get Hi, it is future Megan now with my headset, so that's why the sound quality is vastly different. Um, so yeah, I got this kit in March. It's actually April now while I'm recording this part of this. Um, the audio, just because I was very busy in March. Um, <laughs> but basically that day after I got all done opening everything up, I started working in the workbook and just sort of, I did some of the practices, like this little shapes one is supposed to basically get you familiar with your paintbrushes, um, which was handy. Uh, I'm not used to working with gouache, like I said, so it was interesting to try out like the filbert and the different rounds with these um, sort of guidelines just to get a feel for how the gouache behaved while on a paintbrush. If you've worked with gouache before, you probably already know how it acts, but I really haven't done much with gouache. I have some watercolor gouache that I got with a um, subscription box once, but I basically only use it to like add a little bit of details on top. I, I use it like an acrylic, and even acrylics I'm not very comfortable with. <laughs> but the gouache, this gouache actually, the whole bean acrylic gouache, it was a lot thinner than the watercolor gouache I'd used, which makes sense because the watercolor gouache is designed to be like... I know all gouache is supposed to be mixed with water, but the watercolor gouache especially, <laughs> while this was already a little bit like more fluid, less viscous, so I was right from the get-go able to just work with what I had. So I did some practices, um, I decided I was only really going to work on this lemon um, one in the workbook. I just kind of wanted to go through a few different parts of the workbook quickly, because I didn't want to make a four hour long video of me painting. <laughs> um, and I didn't use uh, the little paper book that kind of broke down the steps. I kind of wanted to just do this trying to recreate what her end product was. So I had that off, off screen just in the book open up. And as I was working, I was sort of every now and then I'd go and I'd flip the book over to look at how her steps worked. And uh, I was really enjoying like just trying to recreate her art um, using like textures and um, different color mixing. Like it was very fun to play with. Uh, I didn't do it exactly like hers, obviously, and there was a few places where I had to like redo my steps, but because it's wash and it's very opaque, it's a lot easier to fix your mistakes. Um, although, if you go out of the lines, quote unquote, um, unlike watercolor where you can just kind of pick the color back up if you're quick enough with uh, a little extra water, this obviously you can't do that with. You'd have to basically go over and paint over it white or something. But either way, I was having uh, a lot of fun with this, but the sun was also getting very bright. So I was starting to get a huge headache staring at this paper. Uh, so at some point I had to stop and take a break and come back. Um, but I was still, I was having fun. I was listening to music. I really like these gouaches. They're really great. I actually really enjoyed them. I've used them again since once or twice. Um, to add stuff to uh, watercolor ink illustrations. And uh, I do think the kit is um, really worth it if you're brand new to a lot of this stuff. So like say you, most of your art, you've just been sketching in a sketchbook with just like pencils, color pencils, pens, you know what I mean? Like you haven't really gotten into any specific medium and you aren't really comfortable with painting in general. This would actually be really useful. I think the workbook is a great way to break down this sort of um, 
process of of painting especially if you really want to emulate uh, a specific artist's um, style to begin with to like get comfortable with obviously you know work and develop your own style over time but I think just the way the workbook is set up that is really useful for that kind of person you know just getting into these kinds of materials um, for me I would have preferred the workbook to have like a few pages of this so maybe like five or six pages of study work based on the workbook provided and then a bunch of pages that are basically in a workbook so you don't feel bad wasting the paper just playing around and trying to adopt the materials to your style but like I said in the, earlier in the video um, what I plan on doing is like I'll probably keep the first handful of pages to do studies if I'm trying to figure out a technique and I think Sibylline's process emulates what I want to do and uh, I'm going to take the rest of the pages and because gouache is opaque I'm going to try and do use it maybe to make um, to do scenery studies um, so that I can just flat wash them with like the, the sky color and build up a scenery on top of that. I thought that would be a good way to use that workbook without having to necessarily use just what it is. Um, I also really enjoyed the sketchbook, uh, the Mas Rico sketchbook. I haven't started using it yet. I want to finish off the sketchbook I'm using now. Like I like to try and finish what I've got before I start the next one because otherwise I have 16 half finished sketchbooks. And I loved all the other products that came with it. So if you are already looking for a Mas Rico sketchbook and if you really want to try a new material, it's still worth it. But if you're just sort of like, I don't know, I kind of want to some gouache and uh, I could use a new sketchbook I think you could probably do better picking up a primary like for your money I should say picking up a primary set uh, at your local art store um, I recommend these whole beans they're very smooth <laughs> and then picking up just like a nice um, watercolor sketchbook there or watercolor pad whatever whatever material you want to paint on and going from there just just on a financial standpoint if you're like me and you were like ooh Sibylline oh my god ooh Sibylline go for it it's fun and also my in-laws bought me this <laughs> so I didn't have to spend anything <laughs> um, so then yeah I decided I wanted to swatch all the colors and because obviously to swatch the colors um, I try to usually just use them as their base color um, I, I could have done like I do for the um, watercolor chicken swatches where I like thin these out and show them at different stages of thickness but I kind of just really wanted to play with that um, like cell shaded really thick set flat colors that you can get with gouache like Sibylline does um, like she does mix and thin out her colors and do a little bit of gradient here and there but a lot of her stuff is like built up layers of just straight colors which I really like it looks really clean and I wanted to play with that too so I thought well I'm swatching them anyways and it's probably how I'm gonna keep using the gouaches like, I feel like if I want that watercolor thinned out texture, I'm gonna just use watercolor. I'm probably not going to use the gouache unless, I don't know, that for some specific reason I think I need to use something a little thicker or that can't be picked up and maybe the color I want to develop won't be, um, will be something I need to work on top of a lot, in which case watercolor I might be picking up going over and over and over again. So using something like this for the background piece so it doesn't pick up once it's put down. That's all good. Because yeah, with the acrylic wash, you can't reactivate these with water. Watercolor gouache you can, acrylic wash you cannot. So once this goes down, it stays down. So remember that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I did all these chickens in this like simple couple colors at a time. Uh, and I, I think I just ended up using the filbert brush for all of it. I may have gone back in with one of the, the, the smaller round brush, but uh, at this point I was just sort of having some fun with it and I, I didn't want to be too strict because it's a chicken swatch and they're supposed to be fun and uh, goofy so I was having fun I really liked all these colors too they're very um they're very rich and very like not obnoxious if that makes any sense they're like a nice um comfortable natural color for each of those uh and like I like to do stuff soft uh and pastel a lot so like even that red it's a bright red but it's still a very like earthy soft red if that makes any sense i don't know i also really love the way gouache dries down the like texture of it um it's like uh like a, a matte versus a glossy print like just that like acrylic always dries down really shiny i find from what i've seen i mean obviously probably the better quality the um acrylics the better you can like control how that 
looks, you know, you can make it have that nice soft matte look like an oil does. Um, but these gouache, I found they had this really nice, like, very simple matte finish when they were all dry, which I just really enjoyed. And then I went in and I basically just mixed each color with white to kind of show a little bit of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? D difference is the, the wrong word, but you know what I mean. Um, you know, like with watercolors, I would have a few different areas of uh, where I like gradiated it, gradiated it, gradiented it. And with these ones, um, since I wasn't watering them down, I thought I would just mix them all with white to kind of give it another, like, and this is what you can do with it if you lighten it up. Um, and then I went in and I kind of lined everything a little bit with the, um, just a color that I thought suited the color that was already down. So the yellow and that um, eggshell-y color I did with the brown and like, the pink I did with red. And uh, I had a lot of fun just painting chickens. <laughs> I always have fun painting chickens. What am I talking about? I would say um, the kit for me was worth it. There was a lot from it that I got. It may not be worth it for everybody though. Um, so like I said, if you're wanting to get into a specific medium and you don't have um, a lot of money or a specific idea in mind, um, so like you aren't specifically wanting to emulate, say, Sibylline's art, uh, or specifically wanting the other materials that this comes with along with that, um, like I said before, I would advise going to your local art store, preferably if you can find one that's locally owned and not just uh, Michael's, but, you know, do what you can. And get the primaries and a black and white in whatever material you want to learn, and then get um, just some, a good quality sketchbook or pad of paper to work on to practice, and you'll spend much less money <laughs> and uh, probably have a good time learning with it. Uh, if you're like me and you think all this stuff is very fun and you like it, then go for it. Pick them up. I know Lee Ellickson is working on one right now with Monster Co., so that might be worth looking into. So this video was kind of a long one, and I hope you liked it, but uh, I'm going to take a moment to thank all my patrons. Uh, Whiny or Winnie? <laughs> Charlotte Mitchell, So Spice, Audrey McAvoy, uh, Livia White, Sarah Flanagan, Philippa Riggs, Tasha Red Fox, Friday Norvell, Rory, Jesse's Grill, and Andrew Wilson. And if you want to join my Patreon, the link is in the description. Thanks so much. Bye! <laughs>